How's it going? Welcome back, my beautiful sinners, to another great video here on The Savior Show. That's right, guys, where we talk about the current state of humanity, fun topics, and of course, my original music that I make. Any support would be hugely appreciated, okay? Please check out the links down below. I am an affiliate with Razer, so if you want discount on gamer headphones or laptops or whatever i can give you a huge discount so please use the affiliate links that would mean a lot and check out my music on spotify anyway my sinners let me know how you're doing down below in the comments today and if you enjoyed this video and if you're new please do subscribe and hit the like button that would mean a lot to me so today guys we are going to be talking about the simulation theory that's right okay do we live in a simulation or are we living in a simulation? I think that there is a high chance that we are already living inside of a simulation. Now this is a very, very big topic, okay? So I'm not gonna able to tackle all of it probably in one video, but I'm gonna give you an idea of the simulation theory and how we can actually already live inside of simulations and how we have already been doing so for a long time. And that's a really interesting thing that not many people talk about, especially when it comes to do with the simulation theory. This topic is really interesting to me, and I think it's a really important thing that we should discuss because moving forwards with humanity, we see that we are using more and more technology to socially interact with other people. We are using technology to entertain ourselves. We are using, inter you know, technology to basically enhance our life and basically distance ourselves from our original biological being now i talk about this in my dystopian series if you don't know what that is please check out the playlist it's very interesting and that's pretty much one of my main focuses on this channel but um you know i don't think that technology is all good okay i think that we are using technology in the wrong ways we are getting very addicted to technologies we know that studies show that social media and you know Instagram and stuff like this has a massive negative effect on people we know that it basically distances us from our original roots in biological humanity form we know that you know the people who make this technology aren't all good you know the big corporations big tech who basically use it to social engineer us and also control us and make us think a certain way but at the same time it does have positive effects because now you can pretty much learn anything you want you know you have a wide data base of knowledge where you can just learn whatever you want just by using a laptop or your phone you can interact with people across the world you know we have electricity we have you know fast transport we have amazing medicine and we have you know simulated universes that we can explore and, you know, which is pretty crazy, okay? I mean, 50 years ago, you know, it was a completely different world. I mean, you know, just imagine, for example, Pong, you know, the simple little 2D game of basically kind of like tennis. Um, and then imagine, for example, No Man's Sky, which isn't, I know, the best game ever, but it is an infinitely um, simulated universe. Or Red Dead Redemption 2, which is high detail and the fidelity and everything about that is truly amazing to vr where we can actually enter simulated worlds to ar where we can overlay realities on our own realities um you know algorithms deep fakes ai uh robotics everything you know technology is so so massively improving every single day it's getting more and more evolved as time goes on it doesn't stop it's you know evolving faster than anything else in this world okay and not a lot of people realize how much technology has changed the world the internet probably one of the biggest inventions except electricity of course of mankind has absolutely changed the whole way of humanity and how we absorb information how you know it controls us how it divides us how it brings us together i mean you know if it wasn't for the internet do you think mainstream media would have the power that they have do you think that we would you know constantly you know be bombarded with information and you know just you know it's massive it's changed the whole world okay it's absolutely crazy and there is a there is a name for this theory of why uh, technology is rapidly improving i can't remember what it's called but it's, you know, it's some kind of, uh, like, 
once you're on this path of technology moving forwards, it basically will never stop. Because in a way, evolving humanity is in sense evolving technology because we are using technology to basically um, push the limits of our own biological being to the next level, to transcendence, to the symbiotic, um, you know, afterlife or whatever. And, you know, <laughs> I don't really like technology because, like I said, we are biological apes at the end of the day. And, um, you know, technology can be good, but it's also divided us. It's also made us lose track of what's important in life. It's uh, become absolutely greedy and capitalism and modern day consumerism has basically made technology into something not beneficial completely. It's made it, you know, in a way negative. I mean, there are still ben benefits to technology, of course, there's massive benefits, but that now with this rapid growth, we see there are a lot of negatives. And that's what I talk about. You know, I want to avoid a dystopian future. If we can use technology to bring humanity better and, you know, become better as a species and go out and explore the stars and, you know, enter these simulated universes that can actually benefit us and, you know, not completely detach from our own biological truth, then that would mean a great deal to me. But sadly, humanity doesn't look like it's heading towards that direction. Okay, so that's just a little backstory of why um, technology is so rapidly, you know, improving 24-7 and why I think you know, this dystopian world that we are heading towards, we need to really think about it because it's changing so quickly. Just, you know, look at the last five years, look at the last 10 years, look at the last 15 years, okay? Imagine a world, you know, the future in 60 years time. What is VR gonna look like? What is AR gonna look like? What is social media gonna look like, okay? How is the internet going to evolve, okay? So these are the questions we need to ask and Today, like I said, I'm talking about the simulation theory, okay? Now, the simulation theory is basically... Basically, it has two points of, you know, it has two main points, okay? So basically, either we are going to evolve to the point of, you know, just being biological humans and we're going to go extinct without ever creating, um, you know, simulated realities, okay? Or humanity is going to evolve to the point where we create ancestor simulations but and what this is basically it means that we live through our old humanity experiences via a simulation or we create um basically parallel realities similar to the parallel universe um theory or the many worlds theory or the multiverse theory but it's actually not in you know uh real space and time it's all simulated via a super you know high tech, computer, and algorithms, and AI, and all that stuff, okay, and AI is, uh, you know, it can pretty much do anything nowadays, okay, so, and the third option is pretty much that we are already living in a simulation, and we don't even know it, okay, so I don't know which one of the three is actually true, I'm pretty sure that we will create uh, simulated uh, realities, I don't know if we already live in a simulation, that could be likely, or we are just going to go extinct, and this is never going to become possible, which is also a possibility because humanity loves war and all that good stuff. So I don't know. But it is very possible that we are already living in a simulation, okay? So just take games for example, okay? Games are, in essence, a simulated world that you can enter and you can interact with, okay? Um, now, the question really comes to do with what is reality? What do we perceive as reality? Or is it something that we measure as in physical space and you know, physical being or just physical presence. Because if it is, then entering a virtual reality world via VR or something, you know, and having your perception altered, does this mean that you've entered a new reality, okay? You know, the questions have kind of gone unnoticed, okay? People don't question things, they just accept them. Because like I said, when technology is improving so massively, okay, people just, you know, take it you know, they don't really um, think about it, they just accept it because it's part of evolution. You know, if you're born into a world with, you know, television or mobile phones, then that's fine. You know, but if you were born into a world where basically the, the only things that you had were horses and carriages, and then you were suddenly transported into the current reality that we live in now, then you would be absolutely mind blown. So that's what I'm trying to say is, you know, people don't question these technologies and what the nature of them actually are.
because pretty much you know we need to define what reality is because if it's just a perception then we can enter any reality that we want anytime okay so VR is that a reality okay when you have sensors and full haptic feedback and you can feel everything and all the simulations and all the stimulations of real life in a virtual reality world you know smell taste touch does that then become a reality that you're living through in cybernetic uh, computer space okay so the question is games nowadays okay are truly amazing okay and so we, you know any kind of simulation is amazing it doesn't have to be a game okay so in the future games for example will basically become so close to reality or they will match our reality so well with full-on fidelity you know full-on real world physics you know it will just become so close to reality that you can't tell the difference between a simulation and reality and that happens sometimes even in modern day tech you know with some amazing games for example boneworks it's very easy to trick your brain into thinking you're actually in this reality okay so you know we just need to see the natural evolution of technology and how basically one day it will become you know it there's there, there won't be a difference between our reality and games is what i'm trying to say okay so we need to accept that as a possibility for the simulation theory. The other thing is how can we do ancestor simulations, okay? And we already have a basis for this with current technology, and this is called the Tesseract, okay? Now, the Tesseract is pretty much uh, an idea based on how we can create ancestor simulations with modern day tech, okay? For example, we need a virtual reality device where you can interact with a simulated world, okay? Then you need AI algorithms to program, you know, a memory, for example. And we can have, you know, uh, AI that can abstract um, and basically take, you know, humans' memories and their, their experiences and, you know, program it into uh, AI and basically fill in the gaps of your own memory and enter that memory via VR, via these uh, AI systems, okay? Then all we need is a haptic feedback suit, basically, to bring presence into this. And then you've created, basically, an ancestor simulation where you can interact with previous versions of yourself or, you know, a, par a parallel reality of yourself and interact via that way. So, you know, already we have a basis of, you know, um, creating these simulated universes and this can be a fresh completely new universe or it can be like I said an ancestor simulation which is very very possible okay so who's to say we are the original versions of ourselves we could just be one of many copies of our own simulations okay and all you really need is you know data okay and as you know AI collects our data 24 7 you know what we like uh, how our shopping habits are, you know, the things that we dislike, uh, the questions that we ask, and all that kind of stuff, you know, this is how advertisers always market to you exactly what you want now, this is how the algorithms know on websites what you're interested in, this is how Google knows exactly what you like, what you don't like, um, so basically we can take that data and implement it via an AI algorithm, and then take some kind of new AI that basically takes your memories and puts that into an AI algorithm and then you can take it from other people to fill in the spaces okay and then you can use a virtual reality device to enter that universe and then you can interact with it via you know sense sensory uh, algorithms and sensory AI that can basically fully immerse you in that simulation so it's not you know far-fetched it's not sci-fi I know I may sound a little bit crazy it's very hard to explain all this information you need to go and look it up yourself, okay? Just research for simulation theory, but, you know, the ancestor simulation theory is very, very possible, and we can pretty much do it with current technology. We just need more advanced AI to access our memories, uh, you know, photo technology, you know, now more than ever we can take photos of ourselves, so there's so much backlog of data um, to basically, you know, capture someone's face, that's how deep fakes work, you know, capture the moment in time, you know, for surroundings, so you can program it into a simulated version. So ancestor simulations and many copies of ourselves simulated is very possible. So it's very possible that, you know, we are 
a simulation of ourselves far from, you know, basically in the future. Um, and we are just a simulation carbon copy of ourselves or a high advanced humanity that has managed to clone us and simulate us, okay? Um, the other one, like I said, where we build a base simulation is also very, very possible because like I said, when you just look at games and media and technology in building these simulated worlds, you can very easily replicate that and uh, build a new fresh simulation that you can enter, um, you know, through some kind of device, okay? So, the simulation theory is a very interesting topic, in my opinion, and I think it is very possible that we are already living inside of a simulation, and it's very possible that ancestor simulations are basically the main source of the simulation theory, where basically we've become so evolved that we've replicated and simulated ourselves and different moments in time, uh, it's really not that far-fetched, to be honest. So you just need to go and do the research. I think it's a very interesting topic. Does it really change anything, though, that the fact that we're living in a simulation? Not really. I mean, the universe is crazy. We don't really know how it works. So if it's simulated, uh, you know, that would, you know, it doesn't really change anything, you know, because we don't know why we exist. We don't know why reality is the way it is because we all know that we can alter our perceptions with anything, with chemicals, that's how our brain functions. How, basically, our brain is already simulated, so saying that we live inside of a simulation isn't really that far-fetched, and you need to really do the research into ancestor simulations and base simulations, but it's really not that far-fetched. Just look at how games have improved, and basically, we can enter these simulations with, you know, different devices and different technology basically one day we'll have you know a brain implant like Neuralink that will basically instantly transport us into a simulation at the moment it's like VR so it just it's like a narrow perception but it's still your vision perception and now you can have feeling with haptics so it's gonna get there it's pretty crazy uh, <laughs> you know I'm not sure I like it that much I think we need to be very careful because this can basically detach us from our biological roots like I said and destroy humanity and distance us more socially so it's not all good but I think it's a very interesting topic that we are probably already living in a simulation um, so yeah let me know your opinions on the simulation theory if we are in a simulation and if we are in a simulation don't do anything crazy because sadly this is most likely our one life um, you know even if it is a simulation so don't think you can go out and basically you know do real life Grand Theft Auto because that's probably not a good idea if you get what I'm saying but yes it is very probable that we are living in a simulation in 2020 it wouldn't surprise me anyway I hope you have your blessed day and stay safe and stay simulated and report any glitches that you might find to me the savior because I'll sort it out for you I mean I think we all agree that 2020 is a massive glitch in the system anyway have yourselves a good day and I'll see you in the next video. Peace out.